All right, now using bicard rib indicates pretty controversial, right? And to be honest with you, I very rarely used it because those people respond pretty quickly to fluid resuscitation and to um, insulin drip. Just in case, and even the textbook saying if the pH less than 6.9, it is an indication to give bicarb a drip. And usually I don't give pushes if I'm going to give, I give uh, a mix uh, NaHCO3 in free water. So I don't give the patient an extra dextrose, right? And as soon as I come to improve the pH above this, I stop it because as I said, those people quickly respond to insulin drip and uh, to um, in, uh, to the, uh, an IV fluid resuscitation. The other indication, DK, and actually in not just here, is severe hyperkalemia, especially if it's associated with acidosis. That's when you give to lower the potassium level, and we'll come to that in a separate video. But that's another indication for that. And um, rate-wise, in DK, I don't 100 to 150 per, an, per hour. And again, try to separate if you want to give the dextrose. Remember, sometimes with instant drip, you need to give dextrose if the blood sugar fall below a specific value. But to be honest with you, most of the time when you reach to the um, time that you need to add dextrose to fluid, because the, now the blood sugar less than 250, that means acidosis most likely it's corrected. And again, I'm very hesitant. Even 6.9, I've seen patients respond very quickly and they did not need to have the bicarb drip. So remember that. All right, next let's talk about another use of bicarb drip, which is to prevent contrast induced nephropathy, which is another controversial thing. Uh, so some people use it or not, and some not. I prefer to use just an isotonic solution without bicarb. But if you decide to do this, Right, the way is is three mil per kg per hour. Uh, this is for one hour, just one hour. Right before, let's say the patient will receive contrast at one, you give it at twelve, right? And then after that, one mil per kg per hour times six hours post contrast exposures. Lo no longer. So this is the drip rate of the bicarb here and here. And you mix your own bicarb, whether with the free water or D5 or uh, half an S. So again, if you decide to use it, that's the way how we use it for contrast induced nephropathy. Another indication to give bicarb drip is what we call urine alkalinization. And there is different indication to use the urine alkalinization, but the common one are salicylate Toxicity, aspirin toxicity, right? So that's one where we use um, urine alkalinization and usually we give a an amp, like one to two milli equivalent per kg pushes. So as you see, every time we give a bolus of pu or push of bicarb, we use this, the one to two milli equivalent, and that's translated in one to two amps most of the time so you won't be wrong when you pick one to two amps to push right the goal here really is to bring the urine pH when we say urine alkalinization the goal here is to increase urine pH that's the goal so here the goal is to bring urine pH really high to 7.5 to 8 in salicylate or aspirin toxicity and we continue with the bicarb drip until the serum salicylate drop less than 40 milligram per deciliter and usually make it easy for you this managed by poison control or toxicology on call the other indication for urine colorization as most of you know rhabdomyolysis okay 
And in rhabdomyolysis, the main treatment is really is aggressive IV fluid resuscitation. So that's when we use it. But let's say we decided the, the patient has severe abdomenalysis and severe is mainly like less more than 5,000. Because they're saying if the CPK is less than 5,000, the risk of pigmented induced acute kidney injury is uh, really minimal at that point. And the goal here is to make the urine pH, see here 7.5 to 8, here it, we're just trying to make it bigger than 6.5. So a lower value and lower threshold. Uh, so, um, so the way we give it here is the drip is around 2 mL per hour. And be careful here that this should be separate from the isotonic solution we giving. So you give both hand in hand sometimes as long as there is no pulmonary edema, right? And then as all bicarb, you need to monitor the pH, the calcium and all of that. We'll come to that on a separate video. And if there is um, a good diuresis, the patient has good urine output, good response to that, you continue the bicarb rib until the CPK drop less than 5,000. So this is the main goal of using bicarb rib. This is the rate used. If there is no improvement, of course, there is no point of using it. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and activate the notification bell so you get to see the videos as soon as they are released. Glad to have you on board.